Thank you, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> and thank you to our colleagues who have raised these issues. I have amendments before the House today, Mr. Speaker, that delete certain sections of the Act, the section to eliminate the, uh, the registry records that would be uh, destroyed at the time this bill passes. Other sections I seek to delete would make it an offense to travel with long guns in a vehicle. I think this would help to bring more public safety at the time that this bill is going through. But if I can speak more generally to this bill, I want to remember where this came from. We all recall the, the killings at Ecole Polytechnique, the great demand that came from Canadians from coast to coast that we act to take greater steps to control the use of weapons in crimes of violence. Uh, one of the witnesses before the committee back in November of last year, Natalie Provo, she was one of those who was shot in Ecole Polytechnique. And I just wish to, to quote from some of her evidence. Uh, I was injured on December 6th at Ecole Polytechnique. I was shot by a, by a man using a semi-automatic uh, weapon and some of my fellow students died. A lot of work done by many Canadians who were friends families of the victims, but more those across the country who recognize the risk and realize that we should take action. Now that's not to say that the long gun registry has been perfect. It's not to say that it was implemented in ways that made all Canadians have confidence in the system. And there would have been, had there been an occasion for compromise, I believe an opportunity for those who have legitimate concerns, and I recognize that members in the Conservative Party and members uh, within the New Democratic Party, two of whom chose, and I think as a matter of conscience, to vote with the Conservatives on this bill. There are aspects of the way the Long Gun Registry has been created that create for members of the Green Party in rural areas, I've heard from a lot of people who would have liked to have seen the legislation changed. But this circumstance is one where we were forced to go for and against with no compromise, no room to say, let's see how we can maintain a registry so that we know where semi-automatic weapons, so we know the guns used by snipers, so that we know if it's a sawed-off shotgun, so we know where these arms are, and if they're legal weapons in Canada but must be registered, we maintain that registry. In the haste, I'm afraid, to kill the long gun registry, because it's been such a rallying cry for the Conservative Party, they've moved and this is not the first time, too fast. They've moved so fast that they've ignored the implications that the RCMP have confirmed to us that in removing the long gun registry, we are now moving backwards more than to the time before this bill was passed. Oh no, we're going back more than 30 years in losing the requirements that a person who buys a weapon must ensure at point of sale that that purchase is registered, that the police will know that someone has a weapon. We're, we've absolutely wiped out the registration for a whole category of weapons, including the kind of gun used at the massacre at Ecole Polytechnique, including the kind of weapon that was used at the shooting at the CIGEP at McDonald College. These kinds of moving too rapidly, not thinking things through because the goals have become much more geared by spin doctors than by criminal law analysts are leading us to having bad legislation passed and I think we should now ask at report stage that we rethink. The opportunity is a brief one. It comes down to 10 amendments put forward by members of the official opposition, uh, by the Green Party, by the Bloc, seconded by members of all parties on the opposition benches to say let's just take this chance that we have to think through can we, through deletions of those sections that, are, that create <coughs> un, un, unacceptable situations, provide a way to lessen the negative impact of this legislation? But again, I'd like to say that could we have started this over? I would wish we could have started it over. And bear in mind the concerns of so many witnesses before the House of Commons Committee. I'm reminded very much of the importance of the evidence of the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police. 
they pointed out very clearly in their evidence that there was a significant preventative and investigational value to law enforcement and to the communities they served in having the long gun registry. They pointed out that yes, there were overspending. We, we certainly know that there was uh, much more invested in setting up the long gun registry than needed to be done. It was, it was certainly it went over budget, but that money, that's all sunk costs. The, the annual functioning of the long gun registry now, as confirmed by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police investigation, confirmed by the Association of Canadian Chiefs of Police, is cost effective. We have a registry now that is working, that law enforcement officials have, use, have reasons to use, and if we look to the most recent report of the RCMP, which came out after this House had adjourned for Christmas and the New Year, the report for 2010 came out and once again confirmed that this registry is being used by law enforcement officials. It is being used more than ever. It is being found to be cost effective. If there was ever a time for members of the Conservative Party who are, I believe, absolutely concerned with crime on our streets, to have pause and consider whether, as my colleague from the Bloc Québécois just pointed out, when the registry is functioning and a long gun has been registered, it reduces the likelihood that someone will steal it. It is then traceable and trackable. It actually reduces the risk of crime to legitimate legal gun owners. We also know that it provides the tools to police so that they can avoid a conflict in a home with domestic violence if they know there's a long gun present. It gives them tools, as they say, and I quote now from the evidence of the direct, a director who is it with the, uh, the town of Gatineau Police Chiefs, uh, the, uh, Police Chief Mario Harrell, who testified that the current registry is, quote, a reasonable balance between the exercise of an individual privilege and the broader right of a society to be safe. We've had, since, more, since we adjourned at Christmas time, greater and greater evidence that this bill has got moved too quickly and is losing the opportunity to keep Canadians safe. We've seen the, the uh, venerable mayor of Mississauga, Hazel McCallum, calling in mid-December for a reconsideration of scrapping the long gun registry as it became quite clear that more weapons would ha not be traceable at all through the failure to recreate the existing registrations that were set aside when the superior registrations under the long gun registry came into effect. Mr. Speaker, what we have here is a rush to kill the registry that's born more out of a sort of visceral hatred for the fact it happened at all than for sensible public policy. There's a middle ground here, and in its, its speed, its ideological vengeance towards the previous Liberal government which brought in the Long Gun Registry, I'm afraid my colleagues and friends in the Conservative Party are moving too quickly. It's time to do as much as we can today at report stage by passing the amendments that are put forward as motions today, all of them, I would plead for Conservative Party members to pass all of the amendments, one through ten, that are before you today. It goes some considerable way to opening up the door to improving this legislation so that our colleagues on all sides of the House with constituents in rural areas, with hunters and farmers, and with those of us who are driven by a concern for the safety of women and knowing that passing this legislation will put women's lives at risk, I beg of you to take the chance now and pass these amendments. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.